Cleveland. All right. Well, first of all, how are you enjoying your uh, your uh, first year here? Good. Is it going on, going along pretty good? Going real well, thank you. Well, great. Well, I guess my first question would be a little bit of background uh, stuff here. Um, where are you from? Originally, Originally. from uh, mm -hmm. Michigan, a town called Jackson, which is about 60 miles west of Detroit. And I was uh, 14 and moved to Peoria. Went to Peoria Bergen and graduated in 70. And then uh, went to Southern, did my undergraduate, my graduate work there. Also did my postgraduate work at the U of I. And have been uh, about Central Illinois. I started in Pinckneyville as a, as a principal and then uh, went to Champaign County, was in Tolono for four years and then was uh, the principal of a high school in Fisher, Illinois. Do you know what the mascot of the Fisher High School school is? <laughs> Bunnies? <laughs> Bunnies. Bunnies. Ferocious bunnies. And I was the head bunny. So <laughs> oh, the head bunny. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm accustomed to that. Is that, is that an honor you uh, actually oh, like? That's an honor I'm <laughs> glad I left. <laughs> and they played football, and uh, it was different. Uh, uh, I guess. <laughs> then took over the superintendency in Totopolis, which is uh, noted for its basketball. Uh, really? And they were the T-Town is the wooden shoes. So I went from being a bunny to a shoe to a, to shoe. a panther. So. To a panther. <laughs> Good transfer. Wow. Well, okay. Good transfer. Yeah. <laughs> Well, all right, um, and let's see now a little bit, a little bit about your family. I understand that you have uh, some children that are also going here to the high school. That's correct. I've got a daughter that's a sophomore and a son that's a freshman, and I have two younger daughters that uh, are in grade school. One's a seventh grader and one's a third grader. Okay, and do you live relatively close to the yeah the school here? Yeah, we do. Okay. I don't want to give the exact location. All right. Well, that, that's perf perfectly fine. We'll uh, we okay. won't ask you your social security number either. Good. <laughs> All right. And uh, <coughs> now, I guess I guess my first question, now getting down to a little bit more of a business-like approach here, um, is what what are your functions as a superintendent? Um, I mean, what what do you do? Well, by and large, uh, if we're going to follow and adhere to a school, to the school code, the superintendent is basically responsible for the operation of the school district, and that incorporates a, a multitude of things. It incorporates the finance, <coughs> it incorporates life safety, so the building's safe, it incorporates working with staff, hiring staff, um, purchasing equipment. Uh, and of course, my position is subordinate to seven members that create the Board of Education. Those are my, those gentlemen are, or those folks are my bosses. So, okay. the superintendent really is the chief executive officer of the Board of Education, much like a corporate structure would be. But uh, so your job is to is to um, oversee the um, the handling of all those of the above listed. Absolutely. Okay. And um, does that now if something wrong happens to one of those, are you held directly responsible? <laughs> you know, I said. Ultimately, uh, as superintendent of a school district, uh, the responsibility falls on you because you're expected to make sure that you have the correct people and positions and you have the appropriate amount of uh, materials and that there's enough money to operate and pay bills and if you don't um, as chief executive officer uh, the board's going to say why not so that's a that's a responsibility that you automatically take on when you um, enter into the position okay, great. All right. Now, um, I, I've heard, I guess, through the grapevine um, that uh, you, the grapevine, the grapevine yeah. that uh, you have some uh, future plans for the school curriculum. Um, some ideas that you'd like to uh, maybe get enacted here in the next couple I of think, years. I uh, think specifically, no. At this point, Aaron, I don't have anything because it takes it takes you a while to get a feel for any new structure, any new organization, and that means you have to know your staff, and you have to know the students, and you have to know what the community wants out of the school system. But on the other hand, it's also the responsibility to look down the road and, and see what's cooking, what is what is uh, needed by students uh, as far as uh, particular qualities upon graduation. What we teach today may not be necessarily what industry or higher education wants in five years. Now, the, the way schools have been structured in the past, uh, we, I think schools by and large, have been agricultural in nature. We, our okay. school year is based on the old agrarian way of uh, a summer's off and stuff. And to say that you're not going to see the day come, maybe not in your generations, but soon, where you're going to have year-round schools, there'll be uh, 40, the 45-15 plan is, is is picking up steam. Uh, tech prep is taking off. I don't know if you've read the paper on block scheduling, but a lot of stuff that is changing the way of a traditional school is happening because there are a lot of uh, outside influences, business, industry, 
uh, higher education are all forcing the high school structure to, to re-examine itself. So specifically, I have nothing in mind. On the other hand, everything is open. And, and part of my job, and I think part of the faculty's job, is to explore and see what's out there so that you feel, and, and the generations coming, that what you receive as you graduate is something that you are prepared to enter either into the business world, service world, or in higher education. Okay, is the, is the curriculum here different from your uh, previous? No, by and large, uh, high school curriculums nationally are based on the Carnegie units, and you have to have so many credit hours. And what drives a high school curriculum is higher education, because students have to take X number of hours to, to reach the specific goal of uh, attainment in or acceptance in a college. And that's changing, too, because you're seeing a lot of people are opting out of, the, of higher education and saying, I'd rather have a skill that uh, can that may require an associate's degree, let's say from a, a junior college, and then go right into a skill area. So that is even changing the way we look at schools today. So that's going to impact, I think, considerably how people, what was once a, a done deal regarding uh, a four-year school, people are saying, wait a second, maybe a two-year might be a good one. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, let's see, I have, I have one final question for you here. Um, now, you hear little bits and pieces about what goes on at the board meetings and, and lots of stuff, and usually by the time things filter down to us, it's been changed around so many times, you know, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to tell what's going on. Mm -hmm. but, but what's been going on recently, uh, since, you know, your, your brand new uh, tenure here, um, that might be interested, uh, you know, these, the, these uh, folks out here and, you know, people at home might like to hear. I mean, what's, been, what's going on? What, well, fortunately for the public here, our uh, board meetings are broadcast on Channel 22. So okay. if you're, you have nothing to do and you have some popcorn and some soda, you can sit down and like watch a board meeting. And that would be, I think that would be very entertaining. Uh, All right. But, what time? Uh, what time? <laughs> they, they run at different times. But so I, uh, what, what we do there, or, or operationally what takes place at a board meeting, is all predicated by a, an agenda <clears throat> that has to be posted publicly. So if you ever want to know, <coughs> excuse me, what's going on, uh, at the board meeting on the 28th of October, I believe is our next, it's got to be posted legally 24 hours in advance. Uh, board meetings are uh, basically times where you uh, pay your bills, you hire, you uh, look at uh, staffing, you uh, do reports. Um, you, we just did the audit report, which is uh, the auditors come in and take a look at your fiscal uh, books over the past year give a report to the Board of Education and make recommendations. So it's always, there's always uh, specific items that have to be covered by the agenda, and the agenda is governed by the law. So uh, there isn't a lot of uh, tomfoolery, or there isn't a lot of uh, waste of time. People want to get right at it. And I think, particularly, you got to remember, the Board of Education, board members are not paid for their services. Mm -hmm. And they dedicate a lot of time and effort, and they don't really want to go on and on and on. They want to get to the point and, and get on with it. So. And I think District 308 here is blessed with having some very good board members and some people with experience, and I think that's critical. Well, okay. I'll, you know, I'll tell you what. Um, thanks a lot for coming on to the well, show here pleasure. today. And uh, we wish you luck in your future years here, and I hope it uh, <coughs> proves to be a successful venture. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Once again, that was Mr. Longenbucko.